What's happening, everybody? Robert Kennedy the third here, RK3. And if you followed my channel for any length of time, then you know that I'm a trainer, speaker, author, and storyteller. But how do I do those things? When I have speaking events, when I have engagements, when I've got gigs, how do I prep for them? What do I do? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you five things that I do, five. One, two, three, four, five. Five things that I do to prep for any virtual gigs, any speaking engagements that I have. Want to hear about it? Here you go. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. All right, y'all. Here we go. Here we go. Listen, I, I, I love doing what I do and I've been doing it for a little while. Maybe I would say I've been an official speaker for about four or five years or so, maybe a little bit longer than that. But as I learn a little bit more about the industry, let me turn off one of my lights here. As I learn a little bit more about the industry, I've got these this set of steps that I go through and uh, and I'm learning how to systemize and tweak and automate and really go through some things so that I'm even more prepped and on top of it for events. As a matter of fact, today I did this session and the, the person that hired me was a little bit surprised about how many different things that I did and considered as I put the event together. So I can't do all of that without a set of steps that I walk through. I can't do all of that without preparing. So I'm gonna share with you a few things that I do to prepare for those events. But before I do that, I just kind of want to share with you some of the different, uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. These are some recent things that I've done just this week alone. So I emceed an event, I've done a bunch of trainings, et cetera, just finished doing some webinars with, with a buddy. And it's been really, really awesome. Really awesome, really awesome to do that. So how do I prepare? How do I make sure that I'm on track and that I'm giving the client exactly what they need? Well, let me share with you five things that I do. So here's number one, here's number one. Number one is I have a prep call with the, with the client. I've got a prep, I do a prep call with the client. And on that call, we really discuss what are the things that, what, what are the takeaways that we want them to have? Who's going to be there? Who's going to be, who are the people that are going to be in the audience so that I can speak to the different groups, the different, the different uh, audience members, the different roles that they have, all of the different things that, that they want. And I've got to know that stuff in advance. So I, I, I do that. So that's number one. Okay. So number two is I figure out the one big thing that I want my audience to know, right? I figure out the one big thing that I want my audience to, to, to know. And I figure that out based on what I get from the, the person that I spoke with, right? And that's, re that's the reason that I really have that call with them because I wanna find out what success looks like for them. I wanna look, I wanna, when I speak, when I share with them, my, my, my talk, my program, I want to make sure that at the end of this session that they got exactly what they wanted, what they asked for. Right. And so that's, that's what I do. I figure out what's the one big thing. What's the one big takeaway that they have. Okay. So the third thing that I do after I figure out the one big thing is I then create slides and, and assets around it. I create slides and assets around that one big thing, that one main idea. What are the visuals? What are the, what's the text? What is the information that I can put together easily and cleanly to most clearly get that point, drive that point home for the audience. And then after I do that, I figure out engagement strategies. So when I talk about engagement strategies, what, what am I talking about exactly? I'm talking about, uh, what are the connecting points? What are the things that I do to connect with the audience? Because is, there's nothing worse than, than a speaker or a trainer who just stands there and talks <laughs> the entire time, right? You want, you want someone that is going to do something that engages, that really is interactive, that allows the people to, to be a part of that session. So what are the times, what are the moments, what are the activities 
that I have that I can that I can make either in person or virtual? What are the activities? What are the interactivities that I have that I can use to really pull the audience into what I'm sharing? And then after I figure out those things, I try to figure out the tech. Now, online when i'm online you know is it is it going to be zoom is it going to be am i going to be using prezi video am i going to be using uh powerpoint am i going to be using keynote am i going to be using microsoft teams am i going to be incorporating polls and different games am i going to gamify this am i going to use poll everywhere am i going to use am i going to use kahoot am i going to and i'm listing all of these different things and i probably need to do a video where we can deep dive into some of these different things but what are the technologies what are the platforms what are the pieces of software that i need to use because especially if i'm doing some of these events by myself it takes a lot of coordination to make it happen and so you know what are the things that i need to do in order to really understand and do the dry runs and the practices to make sure that I don't have fails during the event. What are my background systems? If something goes down, how do I get back up quickly? Right? So those are the things that I do. Those are five things that I do. And I do a lot more. I've got some checklists that I, that I follow, but I think if you, if you really understand the virtual world, or you want to be a part of that virtual world, especially as a speaker, as a trainer, then these five steps are some really key things that are going to help you move towards that. All right. So that's all I wanted to share with you on this episode. Today is day three of the vlogmas. Vlogmas. Right. <laughs> and so, uh, yeah, yeah, that, that, that's all I got. So join me tomorrow. Join me tomorrow. Day four. And I don't remember what my topic is, but just tune in. And make sure that if you haven't done so yet, I think I've shared a couple of uh, videos or little things here. Subscribe, smash, like all the professional YouTubers say, smash that subscribe button and hit the notification thingy. And yeah, and you'll get notified every time another video goes live. <laughs> all right. I'll see y'all next time as we do this again. I don't even know what I needed to say, but yeah. I'll see you next time as we do this again.